getting lighter and lighter, ain't you? I don't know what I'm going to do. Just keep plugging away here. As I just remembered last night, on the day it appears, I think we're 11 years in to broadcasting today. In 2009, I believe, I started up over at Restore the Republic Radio, Revolution Broadcasting. And I realized last night I think I've been here that long. And now I'm here at RLM, Real Liberty Media. I think going on close to seven here. And so we keep plugging away, keep trying to bring you the information that you'll start to use and stop being those crickets. Those <laughs> euphemism of being everything being silent and nice in the forest and warm and cozy and nothing going on. In fact, we're just, there's a conflagration going on as we witnessed down in, in Australia. I, I look around the world and see reflections of what we are not doing as a society in lots of different ways. And I, there are notices to us if we would just start paying attention. And anyway, so here's uh, some updates uh, for you all uh, coming along that we should be paying attention. Uh, so different different things here. And before I move there, that's uh, this is BTW RLM 353, if memory serves already, as we keep moving along. And thank you, I thank you to all of you that are simulcasting. I appreciate that live and or when you repost. I appreciate all that and all the uh, feedback. And thank you for uh, for giving me comments. Uh, that I can look at eventually I get myself around to the different various places and I can see what's being said I don't have the ability to converse, converse with anybody but it's I can t take a lead from what's being observed and I thank you for those that appreciate what I'm doing here and I do try to bring uh, the best that I, I understand every week with the uh, essentially I have a limitation that's why I'm here every Sunday because I don't have the ability to do anything more I was asked to get on a larger network after Oracle but I can't commit to the everyday uh, thing. And it ended up being uh, the decision I made on the fly to not uh, take that position ended up being the proper decision because it wasn't just a month later I'm into heavy into a serious lawsuit relative to my mining claims and, my, and the cone. So at any rate, uh, there's just some, uh, so much I can do to spread myself along. And, and part of that is to come here and ask you to help yourself Wherever you find the subject matter is interesting to you, it's just jump in. Whether you really know too much, you'll figure that out real fast, especially if you have a question that you can ask me. And I can tell you within my realm of experience, which has been getting more and more vast as we go, and more importantly, in dealing with these things, you understand the underlying creature that you're dealing with much better. And we get, even though I talk a lot here, when and we've talked a lot in the past, I must have written three novels, folks, uh, for all the paper I, I write and what we do in advising people or addressing the government. The, the ignorance is endless, it seems. And it's all written down for us on these certain subject matters I, I have uh, found to uh, attack, given that I'm there because they were attacked. People who claim to be an authority but were not utilizing those authorities correctly to attack and harm us. And so that's where I started to uh, get focused. And uh, this is why we get, I'm here today. I didn't start broadcasting for mid, many decades after I started learning about this stuff. So uh, anyway, here we are, uh, no, 11 years now, I think it is, if my math is right. The Common Core hasn't interfered with my mind. 11 years on, we're still, I'm still trying to tell people there's a problem that you can resolve. And here's, here's what I see you can do. And I would hope everybody steps up at some point. Not many do. And I don't know why. I, I, at some point, it's all we have. In a, the attack, people want to ignore, but it doesn't go away. And it gets it's getting worse. And some uh, thank you to the listener who sent me two links that allowed them to understand more what I'm talking about, things that are happening out of uh, policy universities and, and think tanks uh, come, essentially coming out of Kanukistan, uh, from whence all these uh, things come down upon us, these punitive harms. And they're simply policy decisions. They're not law at all, as I tell you. Uh, was able to see those videos and clarifies what we're more what we're dealing with. It's nothing new for me. It's just clarifying the layers that we're dealing with. And I've the way I tell you to do things really sir, it tries to get rid of all the overburden that uh, comes with trying to deal with this vast amount of a, of attack in your life in lots of different places. As I go through the years and we respond, we, we try to refine, I try to refine for anybody that I work with, particularly the colleagues that I have worked with for well over 10 years now, 
I was working on this long before I started broadcasting, to re refine what we do so the workload isn't so he heavy. And that's that has its own merits all on its own. We've really seen a lot of um, ca good cause there. If I can reflect one of the conversations we had with the government, uh, uh, what we submitted is a six-page comment relative to the waters of the United States definition ends up being 40 something, 47, 49 pages uh, of them explaining how essentially addressing everything we said was wrong, they addressed and said that was wrong. Now their answer wasn't wasn't as good as it should have been, but the point was is we we were part at least if we weren't exceedingly helpful there for for what come out, we at least identified the the problems particularly where no one else had had done before. Now I'm not saying we were the cause. What I'm saying is everything we put was a wrong relative to that definition was addressed in the rule when they revoked the new rule for the old one. That was the bad answer. The old one was got me involved because they used the old one to, to beat down on the miners. And so it's not necessarily an answer, but you can show yourself worthy of what you do against this op oppression that these policies that we can find through the one link uh, that was sent to me by email, and I passed it around uh, in my in my Twitter, uh, will guide will explain to you in part, very small part, that this is real. These people are insane. These people are after you and have no real reason for it. They certainly don't recognize your law. And when it comes from out and foreign, like I tell you, into and is accepted inside your system, systematically, like in through your university system. And if you don't think the think tanks of the of Kanukistan are the same, similar in the United States, or the university system is not the same as the university policy system, or that the federally funded uh, Udall Foundation, which is policy consensus, is not all part of this usurpation of your life. You're really missing the big deal here that really causes a lot of our trouble. And it causes the whole, if you will say there's a whole, uh, what, like left uh, idea. This is not even that at all, but you see that, that it foments that whole nonsense. And as, as long as people on the right start thinking it's in a politician somewhere, or that your ideas of what you think is uh, correct, your libertine ideas are correct, and you don't do anything against them, they are going to make the world and the future what they want, these policy criminals, essentially, all I can tell. And I don't even have a personal thought about it. I just know that they're doing it wrong. And I identified the Kanukistinian connection, even though I didn't go in, I didn't understand. That. There's actually a lot of depths here. That's why I can't touch. I don't touch near the depths I, I could on this broadcast because I can't get people to do the very first step. But in, in our lawsuit in 2013, with the legislation coming through, I noticed that they were adding what ended up being compact legislation, which right off the bat is a con constitutional crime violation. And they say a violation, it's a crime. The states were actually getting in compact together in order to do these environmental impositions, but they were only policies that were turned to statutory law and then I noticed in the words, they were using the word province. Well, in the United States, on the two levels, on, on the two upper levels of what we deal with, uh, what we the people think we deal with, there are no provinces in the United States. And I said, well, that's now an international compact, and that's another constitutional violation. And so we, right on the face, none of these, 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 if you look, it's easy to identify the crime against us. It's how will you respond? Will you respond is now my problem after now 11 years looking at this. In a way, I'm actually shocked at that. But hope, hope springs eternal, I suppose. Hope and change. I'm hoping that you go back and you start to do what you were told uh, that you needed to do if you wanted to keep your life yours and not let those that understood the dynamic of the world for as long as man has known this world uh, was subject to change based on consent. And they can get their consent in lots and lots of ways. So well, a couple updates here. PSAs to the listeners and those beyond it, if you will tell them. Uh, an update to the regulations implementing the procedural pro uh, provisions of the National Environmental Policy Act just came up. Uh, I, I would ask that those of you that are in public lands or in, or have uh, inter uh, people, uh, the federal government using NEPA to interfere with your private property rights on, uh, in the states and wherever, uh, you should be involved. You should go look at this. It's a 40, another 47 pages of uh, what I considered a bunch of blah, blah, blah. When you find out it's not supposed to apply, the problem is it's not in the rule, it's in the application. And the people that are running the policy agendas, feeding it down through the system and convince these policy bureaucrats inside the agencies are the ones that turn these policies, uh, turn the law on its head uh, and uh, implement the policy contrary to the intention of the law. And the, so the rule looks good, but the implementation is wrong. 
is uh, something you need to focus on. So here's an update. We got a few more months to do this. Doesn't mean your mind goes away and says, oh, if I'm interested, I could wait. No, you have to start looking at this now. 47 pages of information if you want to read. I got to page two and I'm realizing a major failures going on uh, right off the bat. And it has to do with when you read the rule, it, it isn't, it's only supposed to apply, like it says, uh, to federal actions. But what's, what's scant, if at all, um, mentioned is that that's the point. They talk about actions, but don't put the word federal in front. And the way it's, in, in, in the, and I think that's a policy rat that did that so that you don't understand this is really supposed to be strictly applied. NEPA is really strictly supposed to be applied to federal actions. You know, those federal actions by the courts have been extended. They, it used to be major federal actions, as NEPA said, but now it's if, wherever there's major money involved, as I've, I've talked to you about all this before, where there's money that they, they can now take this and, and turn this into the requirement for NEPA, which the environmental uh, waltz that are tied to this uh, technocracy that uses those sta stalking horse stakeholders against you. There's a double layer here. Uh, they will use that in order to interfere with your property rights through an agency. And also, they also talk about in the first part of this collaboration. All you hear about is collaboration. They give lip service to coordination. The coordination is your private property rights protected in the county on the count things of county concern. Now, when you understand all this stuff, it's not that hard to keep up with. You're just looking for this thing. You're not looking to get, I don't get into the blah, blah of the, of the regulation. But first of all, I've told you, it doesn't apply anyway. What I'm looking for is where are they harming us with it? And so we're about where I've been talking already with my colleagues. We're probably going to have to write a comment to this. But we're going to do a couple things, likely going to explain that the uh, rule appears as applied to federal rule uh, authority is not, not a problem necessarily for anybody except that the agencies are not told in the rule to prohibit their extent to private property or other things outside of NEPA, uh, the constraint of the major federal action. That's a project plan or demonstration. And so here you have a comment period. Uh, those of you that may have rolled your eyes and said, I don't want to do all that, well, fine, you're helping the problem if you have a property yourself. Uh, and, they have, and this goes down to your states, too. So your states, because this is from the Council of Environmental Quality, this NEPA rule, it attaches to the states through your D state DEQ, which state DEQs were made strictly to apply the federal law. You think it's a state agency, but it's not. It's Well, it's a state agency in name only, essentially. And then the state made a state law relative to water, water um, NEPA, environmental concerns, and you think it's all state law, and it's not. And so this is a big def defect that gets rolled down that you can step up here, no jeopardy whatsoever, put in a comment that's learned, re referencing the law black and white, and show what you know and get it on the record and then be part of getting this thing constrained like we were able to do with the waters of the United States, notwithstanding the misstep they've done to revert this back to 1984 rule uh, definition. We at least see that they made an explanation of why they were wrong. We already understand all that. It was in our comment. Uh, they did give a little bit, a lot of lip service to private property in that rule. That's what they do here. And so if you remain silent, these policy rules get moved along, and that's what comes in the future to take you out. A lot. I said a lot more there than I was going to. You just, I have a link for you. You go to the Federal Register. You can file your conversation, your comment with them. You can find all the information you want from the from the uh, listing. And it's not. Uh, you just have to understand a little bit about what what it's supposed to be. You can look around the news and see how the EPA is taking NEPA and killing people with it, their property rights, uh, causing big problems. You can see how they do it to uh, production, production in particular. Everyone with a patent that ever got imposed upon by NEPA standards, which, again, is a supplemental act. It's not even the act in the first instance. It actually needs another act to implement. This is the act, I'll tell you, though, that tells you, if you'll read very carefully, it's supposed to look out for the mankind's environment, and the balance is in favor of mankind's environment, what they call human. They actually have a, two different terms in here. But they're not supposed to. Environmental concerns do not override and prevail against the needs of mankind. Now, we have looked at that and said, so that I can communicate to you all what this is, ends up boiling down to in function, the needs of mankind end up being the things of county concern. And that's now, listen carefully, they will bring rules through what they call landscape level management, when in fact it's watershed management that you're looking for. Landscape level is a political term. 
It's built in statistics, what they say is best science. Watershed management is what you need to focus on because that's the reality of your watershed. Everybody lives in some sort of a watershed. Everybody. Somewhere, somehow. And they're all a bunch of them and they all have different characteristics and they're all managed to, uh, under the law. They're managed to best suit the needs of the people, if you will. And if we stop the rhetoric and the lies and the deception, we find out that the production of the land, from the land, that's developed to the best, is also good for the environment and also good for the animals and habitat and all that stuff. It's when you take these people that have an emotional, religious, religiosity, policy bent to them, imposing what they think they want to see in the world, that you see adulterations to the norm of nature, and cutting man out, which was actually the reason why nature can actually uh, prolifer uh, proliferate as, as it does, as we find easily, we can see it in the east and uh, east of the um, in the dry lands where people provide my uh, fr ranchers and farmers provide water and agriculture in particular. They'll blame the rancher and the miner, but that's because that's the one that's actually making the environment of which the environmentalists will complain is being threatened, and in fact it's there because of man's development. And so we, they they throw this whole thing. Policy uh, criminals turn this whole thing on their head. On their head, they just look at what it was answering a question that someone had. And you'll notice uh, it's a lot. It's, it is what I've been saying. It's, it focuses in their answers is that they get a good outcome when they get somebody's tax get somebody to pay a tax money a tax bill. It's all about economy, if you will. It's about tax leverage funding and utilizing that funding to create more leverage funding. And so this is a little longer than I was thinking about. Here, update, update through the NEPA rules for us in production and any of you that are out there. And this would mean anything, anybody in a county, anybody for uh, roads, uh, anything that you use for property and property rights and privacy and understanding that the federal government or the state utilizes the NEPA to attack you. This is the place to jump in right now. You can explain that to them once you understand that and can articulate that to them. It's not that difficult. And so move on another update that I guess you'll have to do. And this bothers me a lot only because it, these digital companies are forcing us into the new future and we have no real de defense against it. Uh, but this is, it can be serious if you get it. So you got to be careful and update your, your Firefox. They found another zero day vulnerability. It's under attack right now. They say update your browser now. Well, I, I don't know, folks. Last time I tried to update my browsers, they took away all my protection and security plugins. And so I'm not so thrilled about a lot of this stuff. And so, I, but I love for Wired to the Wise update, those of you that want to and don't care uh, what happens, just go ahead and update because your computer system is vulnerable. They're letting us know. I want to remind you, as I said before, and boy, this day came up quick. I'm going to be crunched to get my uh, file back, my files backed up. But Windows 7 and support, just want to remind you, those of you at Windows 7, uh, my concern is, uh, as I found out when XP support ended that day, folks, uh, my computer died. Uh, when I had XP on it. So I uh, got another system here. I had another system running, which was this system. Now this one's running out. I'm concerned that I'm going to lose this system <laughs> in a couple of days. To remind you, I may be down. We'll see what I can do. It uh, takes quite a long time to back up this system. Uh, and so we'll, I may be down a couple of days anyway uh, before the next broadcast. And yeah, we'll hope everything holds together. But anyway, so there's, I guess you can update the uh, security for Windows 7. I don't update any of that. I'm still, I don't think I'm going to. Every time I do, it screws something up anyway. I'm going to get leave live with what I have and hope I can weather the storm. Uh, and just to let you know, I, uh, I have two systems running at this point. One's my communication systems and one's my broadcast system. My communication system is, is li uh, Linux, Linux. And I use, I found one at the time. It was the XP trade over. It was Linux Lite. It looked really similar, real easy to get into the, the surface of it uh, for an XP user at the time. Um, now I've learned more because I use, I've been using it for years. And so that's the one I chose only because it, it actually loaded on my system and worked right out of the box, if you will. No box, but right off the, right off the internet. Uh, not to sell any particular distribution. The, they will, you will find everyone, things are different. You can pick and choose what you want. But anyway, so I have one system I already use, Linux, for those of you that are wondering, and I, we have this Windows 7 question coming. I just want to remind you for yourself in case you didn't know. And moving on here, another thing, uh, the update we're getting on the finances of the, of the country, and just moving through some quick uh, information here. Some sto A story that I don't even know where to begin on this, so I just wanted to tell you about it, 
and it's really nothing you can do, I don't think, but it, you can because it gives you notice of how fast this thing is going to devolve or how how your life will be stretched taffy thin on they're going to impose austerity and they do it invisibly when this story you hear this story the federal reserve admits it pumped more than six trillion dollars to wall street in recent six-week period and none of y'all got any of that but wall street did i don't know the dynamics of it all i can just tell you that when they they pump six trillion of of debt into something and it's just vaporous uh, it's based on based on what, folks? It's not based on nothing, like everybody says. It's based on the full faith and credit of the United States. Okay, it's vapor. But anyway, anyway, that's what they actually base it on, and they can expand this. And I told you after 2008, the wraps were off. It the, it went stupid. Finances and monetary United States finances and monetary policy went stupid when they started basing the money on debt. And then we heard also when they went to close that the close of the United States that it came out that. All debt is actually GDP. You should have understood that the country was in a trouble if you had known before. But the, so the Fed has quietly been dumping six trillion dollars into Wall Street. This is a, I think, a monstrous story that I don't hear many covering. I'm not able really to cover where my mind goes. We need to talk about. But so here's what I do: when it becomes overwhelming, it got stupid. We need. That's a problem. Do we need to address stupid or can we put it where it is and then start looking at how we don't engage stupid? And what I've been telling you for years is we don't engage stupid by finding the alternative. And I wish people that, that embrace Bitcoin, uh, that have the, the, the embrace of Bitcoin in the world was as much as embracing solid money. I, I would have been more happy. But instead, we always go to the thing that's just as fictional and just as intangible instead of the tangibility which we are told by the system by the federal reserve they cannot really touch in that system and so they tell us they give us notice of what the reality is uh, somehow we choose to to stay in the in the fantasy and so here's a notice i just want to put it out federal reserve admits it pumps six trillion more what uh, that's stupid money folks and then they dump it into your your markets and they put it in the background there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on here uh, that i don't know if many people heard about it means if nothing else, if they can, how far they kick this can down the road, I really don't know. You might actually start seeing inverse, uh, invert negative interest rates, which makes no sense, but that's what they'll do uh, because it's all becoming, it's like you going into a black hole, if those exist. It's stretching out this economy as long and as far as and thin as it can be. The problem is that your life is tacked onto the valuelessness and intangibility of that. And so I've been asking you all to listen carefully to this stuff. Start to move yourself back to the future. Move yourself into tangible, tangible, actual money. It's a little bit heavier to carry in your in your in your pocket, but they can't turn it off, folks. They can't control it, and they can't diminish that other than the commodity structured destruction that they can do. But that is a little more more protected in that it also ties into industry. Now, understand, your industry is kind of dropping, too. And so they're puffing this whole thing up. And I don't want to get too much more doomsday because it's really just us looking in the future and not be, don't be on the tracks when the train shows up, I guess is the point. But here's the notice to us. I think this was a big story. I don't see many people talking on it. For you all behind the woodshed, take the lessons and see what you can do with that. Uh, another thing I talked about before is coming now up, as I tell you, if I don't get to some of this stuff the same week I talk about it, within a week or two, it's it really make, it starts to make more of a news. And it, I have to chuckle just a little bit. We know what the answers are, and we have people that will write about it, and we still are reticent to do anything. We still would refer, re prefer to be crickets and not, not look at this stuff. But what I talked about was the broadcast that I called anti-Semitism and how we combat this thing called anti-Semitism. Uh, this, someone wrote, uh, somebody, Ramsey Baroud, out of Mint Press, reclaiming the narrative, how to combat Israel's misuse of anti-Semitism. Uh, interesting story. In When you read what his view is, he's got a m much more focused view on the Palestinian condition. Uh, my view on that is uh, he speaks similarly, though not in the same words, that we have to get back to the core understanding of what's going on there and not allow this uh, lie, the perpetration of this lie, on uh, the Palestinian problem. And I don't want to sound 
like I favor one or the other. I've already told you my answer to this is pretty straightforward. It has nothing to do with favoritism at all. It has to do with the facts you can produce to the land. And I understand, the way I understand this, what's the dynamic, the Israelis are not the seed of Israel, and the Israelis are an anti-Semitic euphemism for another political cause which has no rights at all over there. And if we reduce the rights of the land to the people that have the, can prove the right to it, not by conjecture, not by politics, not by having a big uncle with a lot of missiles they can send in and threaten everybody, or a military that they can't they can't pry out with anything, uh, then maybe we will have a much more peaceful world. But see, that's not it's not meant to be a peaceful world. And anyway, this art, art, article touches not the way I told it, but it sure sounded when I was reading it that uh, the semantic language that's being used to as you as euphemism. If I go to the light side of it is being used to destroy a condition and bolster a essentially war crime. That that this writing was kind of identifying that same thing that I wanted you to be able to see again. There's just another voice out there. We've got to reduce down to the core issues. We've got to stop allowing people to drag the conversation out and then hide underneath even euphemism, which is, I, I deem that to be even an insult. This is not just euphemism. These are calculated terms utilized to destroy people, their property, their lives, and in, and give some uh, thing um, the air to breathe that is a destructive force no matter where, where it goes. And my thought on that is, so if these people are so bent on putting a political regime together and occupying someplace, why don't they just take all their money and go buy an island and then do it there? See, again, there's an easier, more peaceful way to decide this. I've suggested a long time ago, why doesn't the uh, United States make a deal with with Mexico and give a little bit of uh, Baja California to these people? I don't understand why we have to go to war and that the whole idea about about this is going to war. And I do understand. What I'm saying is on the surface, if you're good intention, you're not going to come up with these sorts of answers. And when you start seeing these answers, then you know that there's, that you can tell, again, you know them when you see them. The intention is, is no good. And so that continues. And that intention can be identified, like I said, in all the stuff I talk about. If you got some pi guy, uh, some groups up in, in Kanukistan making policy, thinking that they're the, uh, the bee's knees to understanding uh, righteousness in the world, and they come into your land with a policy, it's just an answer to a question to how to make more tax, and they come into your land, that can't be good for you. That you allow it means that maybe you're not good for yourself, and I think you need to respect yourself a little bit more. Now, I could be wrong, but then aren't we looking at ourselves as being hypocrites to have another voice in opposition? And if we do have that opposition, then we have a little bit of scruples in us, much more than those people that are trying to invade our land. All they want to do is take you out or take your stuff. And so this is what's going on here. I know that the title doesn't touch on the anti-semantic nature, but when you read the article, it does. I just wanted to put, put this forward. And this got me on to the invasion and the wrong acting and semantics. We're back to the, Arctic, the discussion uh, what's going on here. And I just wanted to touch base again. All these articles are kind of touching base on some prior stuff I've touched. But they're ongoing, and they're the problem, and they've uh, they've allowed somehow in the last few weeks and maybe a month or two, I've noticed I can take a little bit of these, and maybe I'm hoping I can notch it up just a little bit to bring people more more present to what can be done specifically and how to identify the specifics of the attack and what to do to either neutralize it or destroy it so that you get back what was is trying to be stole from you. Uh, this brings up the idea of Virginia and the Second Amendment. Well, I got this story here, which is kind of interesting to me in the in the thought of a people in a society that will profess Second Amendment rights, who give lip service to the constitutions and the power and the limitation of power on all the on all the officials, but come and come out and do do things and allow things that are not correct. As I think I clearly explained with this idea, this concept called sanctuary. Uh, I hope there's nobody that's listened to me uh, or hears it today that, un that believes sanctuary is what what it sounds like that is. I hope you see it, it's not a place to be, and it offers no protection, and it's not constitutional, and it wasn't the uh, the act of the people, the, if you will, the posterity. I'm taking the Virginia reference because that was so clean. I hope you pe people appreciate that one. I hope you went and read it. 
the first three or four articles of the Bill of Rights in Virginia are very clear and concise. And that can be the model, if we don't know, and it was a, one of the, what, the 13 colonies, or one of the originators, that could be the model that I would apply. In fact, I, I do when I talk to people. To every other state, whether or not you had that understanding in your state by the Constitution, it works really the same way. That's why I say, once you understand a, a method and a principle, it, it's a, and it's universal to a place, you, that's why it's important to understand w walls and jurisdictions and, and borders, is because you can apply that same thing everywhere within that border. It's not a question. So Second Amendment sanctuaries are now expanding into Kentucky. As the movement goes nationwide, Americans will not be enslaved by anti-gun governors who violate the Constitution. Uh, boy, you know, that's just a... Um, I would bust out laughing if that was such a if that was not such a serious misstatement. My view on this was that the sanctuary city moving to cities moving to uh, Ken, Kentucky, we've actually heard that they're moving further out than that. This article does pick that up. Uh, it's more than just uh, Virginia and Kentucky, and this is the problem. I've forgotten that Colorado and Kansas is, is also have done these. But this is, again, the problem. Even the heartland doesn't understand, has no heart for the Constitution, gives lip service to it, would rather construct a sanctuary that doesn't work than understand the constitutional power that they have to stop it and, in, and institute that. And I, I, that my focus has been how to do things b at least better, if not correct. Uh, now, I guess you could say that's up for argument, but I will stand on my record over the last, uh, what, 11 years now, nobody comes to me to tell me that I've missed it, at least substantially enough that it's what I suggest is an error. And not reflected that, an error has not been reflected in anything we've been doing. As I tell you, we, I live by a standard. It doesn't mean I'm not wrong, but uh, I, the standard we attempt to meet is not being wrong once. And that's a high, really, I can just tell you, it's a high standard to double check, triple check for. Uh, and then, the, then you hold your breath even so when you think you're, you're knowledgeable about something and you're applying it correctly. But so far, uh, that's been the case. And until I get a word that it's uh, what I'm saying is completely just Looney Tunes, I'm going to continue down the path that I think you need to follow better than what I see sanctuaries is. The cancer is spreading across this country. It wasn't started in Virginia. Uh, it, was, it was already in Kansas and Colorado. And those of you that want Second Amendment rights and you're listening to me and you feel appalled at what I just said, you don't understand the condition. You need to go listen to my uh, my Sanctuary Cities broadcast just a couple weeks ago. There is a certain way that you can address this much better than your emotions, much better than talking about old dudes. The cancer that's spreading, I think, is a psyop injected into the place that people feel good about that they have that they took on instead of the harder, a little bit harder work of understanding their actual constitutional power. Again, I've explained that. Now, that said, I brought up, I noticed uh, some things happened in the last week or two. Stories coming through that people that are people are putting like through Twitter, and I look at the the things people are responding. I don't know how the, I can't dis, I don't know how to describe it. They respond out of their sense of you know you're not going to take you're going to take this gun out of my cold dead fingers you know that that kind of attitude which is okay, but in this case you have to make the record that uh, the system that's in power can't argue with and 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 in that argue in that position in that fact you take away their power even to say and you take a counter argument that they make as a crime or their treason or the failure the omission to act and so some things have been coming through and i've been posting uh, some things on the internet uh, that i see the and i say here's the condition but this is where this other policy criminals are coming their their position is already in policy papers. This is the other thing you learn about in the video I was the video set I sent out that was sent to me by a listener. You hear these policies are coming and they write everything down. This is the same system I deal with all the time. We go look for their policy papers. They will tell you where they're going. And so I've I've ad advanced instead of going down the sanctuary path, which is no sanctuary at all. And if you don't agree with that, you need to go listen to my other broadcast where I explain how, and then you need to produce the proof that shows that that's, in, that's incorrect. 
Because I'm just talking about going right through the Constitution as well, if you l listen very carefully. I'm not making any of this stuff up as I move this along. I've learned not to. It's easier just to copy and paste and put in proper context what you're doing. That's the black and white. That's the objective basis that no one can argue with. But given that you're on the right side of that, I mean, a lot of people want to make stuff up. I don't. It's been easier not to make stuff up. It's like, why do you lie? you got to keep up with the lie, right? If I don't lie, I don't have to worry about much. All of a sudden, lots of stuff sheds from my life because I can just kind of move right along and everything starts to clean up. It doesn't mean it goes perfect because there's always a criminal that wants to take away and essentially attacking truth is just another name for a criminal. And so there's all these kind of people that are out there. I don't know why, but they are. I don't like it. Well, anyway, so getting on to this Virginia, this, uh, this cancer, this sanctuary cancer that's spreading through the United States, instead of people settling down and go read their constitution and do what I did for at least a, even as summarily as I did for Virginia, and I didn't say a whole lot in how, uh, it's not a lot more, but it's more specific looking, uh, literally copy and paste and put in the right co proper contest. There's been the issues coming through that is kind of being fed to the public from Virginia, um, the new thing that the, the legislature over there is going to do, and any legislature does. This is what we saw back in 2013 relative to the infringement on production and the mining law and that kind of thing. And so I see it's the same thing, the same, uh, we went to the policy papers, you can do this. When I went to the policy papers, I, I found immediately they want to take your ammo, they want to take... Uh, uh, they wanted to limit the amount of clips uh, or a clip that you have or the amount on the clip or the magazine. Uh, I don't want to get into all that. So you get minutia of the terminology. Stop it. It has nothing to do with that. It's an appurtenance to the right to bear arms. As Virginia says, it's the right to acquire and keep and keep proficient for what? To stop a mal maladministration in a government where any other constitutional provision failed. Every other failed. And so some more things are coming up, and I want anybody that's interested in this or in your state as the cancer grows to shut it down by your record, you may be the only one that says this. I don't know. We're usually the only one that says these things. And yet, like I said, uh, we've been served well by our in instruction and our proper comment when it's reflected in decisions of the government, which normally hasn't done anything like that before we started speaking the way we were, whether or not we were the singular voice, I can never know. But uh, the other thing came up here, uh, so looking at the policy papers about how they're coming after your guns, first, create the power in the Constitution in your state that you have to have a say. That gives you standing, as I told you. Then you bring your right underneath the Constitution to do the act independent of anything else that's in there, like impeachment, which is not in your hands. Then you uh, identify a condition. And you, and I want to, to keep it simple, you have the right itself, and then you have everything that supports that right, which I call the appurtenance. Ammo, the mumber, the right to, the, to get it, even registration becomes an infringement. Why? Because your whole deal is to counter a government gone wild, and they don't have the, the enemy then doesn't have the right to know who you are or where you are. That becomes an intelligent provision that was a prohibition built in as an appurtenance to the right. You just have to state that. Maybe even cleaner than I just did there, but there's the idea. It's how you, how you make the statement of what you're protecting, uh, notwithstanding what they don't want to hear. And that's what came up here, uh, here last night that I sent back out that uh, I heard, and I have a link, that the legislature in Virginia uh, wants to create an idea for themselves, a bubble with which they don't have to react. In fact, it came out, oh, supposedly a hot mic. They call everybody coming in to do their Second Amendment and sanctuary stuff, uh, the gun guys. And then they also have some comments that they made that are, I guess, discernible from the tape. I couldn't quite make out some of it, but I made some of it out, so I know some of it's there. But the, some of the quotes quoted here in the article are, that the well, one uh, discussing how they would run the meeting that you're going to show up to uh, is that they are mixed up little kids. That's the attitude of a lawmaker. Uh, they, yeah, as long as, and then they said, okay, so as long as, yeah, as long as we uh, just don't respond, in other words, they're not going to interact, then they think they're protected. And I want to address that here as well, because this is all, like I said, their policy papers and how they deal with you is what you respond to, not in a lot of words, you don't get exa you don't get uh, wordy about it, you actually build into your statement 
your authority to be there, and in that authority to be there is their violation, and then all you have to do is tie their actions, or in this case, their omission, where you can tie that they have to respond in the duty of having to respond. Any omission to not respond can be tied in as and then declared to be that felony, or in this case, treason. And so you don't, it's not a lot of extra words. You build up your paper, your comment that you'll read. You just build it up. And it's only, one page is three minutes if you write it correctly. Just single line to just read it through. It's about three minutes of presentation, depending on how fast you read. And so, you, so you, that's all you have to print. But in there, in that space, you have to develop your, your, your authority. You develop the authority in the maladministration by identifying the elements that they've con- committed against uh, that would qualify in Virginia's case with, with I would just treason or felony. Those are good enough. There's another one in there. I can't remember what it is, so I'm just going to not touch it. You can go find it. If you have the elements for that, you state that. Then you just attach any act or omission contrary to those provisions of the Constitution to that those two things. So you don't have to go on and on and on the whereas, whereas, or try to get wordy. You just set up the modules of the condition, and then you attach, uh, once you set up a module section for the violation, you just attach what they did or didn't do to that. And it has to be accurate. In this case, they just don't want to respond. Well, I don't know of a duty they have to respond when they're taking comment. But what they do have to do is in the in the action of their of them of the information they get, they have to act and respond correctly to what they were told. And so you one extra line would develop that connection in this case. And this is not just Virginia, this is in every state you think you want to do a sanctuary city city, and what you should be doing is invoking the power of the posterity relative to the lack of jurisdiction in the lawmaker to infringe on inherent rights which have not not been ceded to the government to control. Look at how fat, how, if I even copied that sentence, folks, I mean, that's a start. Uh, but so they, they may not want to respond in the meeting. I don't know that I could actually identify a constitutional requirement for them to respond in a comment period to them. What I can impose upon them is after they heard the comment, the notice that it omission to respond to it pursuant to the, conversa- to the Constitution and the comment would be deemed to be treason. And you've already laid out before in that document how that is relative to what I said before. So I want to touch base a little bit here. I, lay, I throw these on the Twitter. Just to, They're so summary, folks. I can't even tell you how well I hesitate. I hesitate. But at least that's, I put it out there so people can read it. I hope people pay attention. There's a better way to approach this, better than the cancer of sanctuary cities spreading across the country. Stop giving lip service to those constitutional rights. Start empowering yourself with them. Don't talk about some old dude. You claim the posterity. I know it sounds odd, but you claim to be part of the posterity, having the right. I'm just going through Virginia Constitution as we, as I read it, just as I read it to you. If there's nuances, you can, you will have to f- fix those uh, or add to them or mod, uh, massage those. But I think the basic uh, approach is valid, completely valid. It's just a matter of what you're going to say and and how to go about it. So here we have uh, you now have been given intelligence. The lawmakers are sitting there just for you to go away. You, whatever you say is not going to be responded. And I've found that you need to, in your comment, add that the omission, remember, felony, extortion, coercion of a right, the extortion of a property, or conversion by when they both exist, has, is done by an unwarranted act, commi- commission, or omission. So when I see this, we just won't respond. Well, that may be right. Maybe some of you in, that read better, or faster, or more in depth in your state can tell me where they have a duty and obligation to respond while you're in comment. I haven't really found that in a nice, solid statement. But I do know they have to act under the Constitution constitutionally. And that's the notice you impose upon them. And you state these very same things that you heard on an open mic, that's their attitude, and you translate that to a record. You state the very same thing here. You state it to the record, and because of that, you address the next notice that they may think they cannot respond. They may think that that they may have mischaracterized your status of the posterity as a little kid, but their oath of office and their position requires that they respond constitutionally, and the, the failure of which it will be deemed treason for the purposes of, of fulfilling the Constitution and arresting the maladministration and the treason and the felony that's convi- committed. 
after you tell them that, after you, you can tell them these state sentences that you heard, you get the tape, you might want to have a recorder ready, you might want to draft a transcript, make an affidavit that that's what you heard, and de deposit it in the record. Make your record first. Why is we doing it this way? The sanctuary is not going to work. The constitutional power on the record will. And now you have the record in black and white that was made giving notice to these people that want to come and steal your stuff, who have the presumption of the right and the power of the gun behind them as government and the forces to do so. You will give the record that they actually don't have all that. And anybody comes and aids in the, now we're in equity. Anyone comes the aids and abets that is just as much committing treason or just as much the felon. And it becomes a misprison of those failures. And where do I find a little bit of that example? Just go to what? Have I read it over again? If we want to see some of those terms in the federal side law, you go to what? To 18 uh, USC 3 and 4. You got the act, and you have the accessory to the act is misprison. So you can pull this together in very short sentences when you make your comment if in fulfilling. Let me add another contextual thing here. If a bunch of you got together and realized that what you're saying you need to say is a little bit longer than the one page I'm saying you got to fit in for a three-minute presentation, if they give you the three minutes, whatever the time is, you might want to get together, as we've done, different people essentially just read the next page they have to make a new introduction, but they add on the next amount of information in notice. And so you can tandem, uh, tag team the notice in the record, and you complain that three minutes is not enough, but you're going to do, you're going to have this part. The next guy or gal gets up and does the other part. You don't have to tie it together. You just freestand it and do your other, your next set. So the record you can rely on in the future was made completely, even if your statement's longer than three minutes. You tag team your, your effort. Well, I've been hoping you all would tag team your effort anyway before going in, not sanctuary wise. No, in the con I mean, I don't even know. I, I I don't even have a thought in my mind. There's another way to go, actually. And what are we doing? Does it take away your Second Amendment right? No, you're proving you're doing it peacefully the first time, and they're going to be recalcitrant in doing the constitutional duty they're obligated to, perfecting their crime, giving you the right under at least the Virginia Constitution to to affect, as the Constitution says, the posterity gets to decide on their terms. Okay, so, anyway, I hope people are picking this up. I don't know. I, I, I listen, hear myself talking. I know my mind is qualifying all this, saying, okay, that's working out pretty good. And I just think, well, who's picking this up? And you all shrug your shoulders, and what do we do? And this and that. I'm telling you, folks, this is this is what how it starts. You, you always see a even if it's a lie, you see the government officials, you should just follow it. Even if it's a lie, they always throw out a lame excuse about why they did something. You heard that in the Iran thing. Just throw out the lame excuse and that gives it up. That's good enough. And so I'm making, I'm not asking you to make a substantial uh, uh, presentation that is founded in black and white objective basis and you go with that. And you do that to offset their attitude. You see an attitude, they're going to dismiss you. They did this to us in 2013. I told you this in the other program, the other broadcast. They get or the or the or you get out and you and you protest on the steps. They you're not talking to someone that doesn't want to hear it. They hope if they hope, if they're quiet and you'll go away. They're just going to weather this thing. Well, it all depends on the record that you make. For I'll just tell you when they go to this attitude. I would have to say, notwithstanding all the passion and all the correct ideology around the gun, the Second Amendment, and all the things that you're saying about the old dudes, none of it has been telling them that they're in trouble for what they're doing. None of it. When we see this attitude, I know we've done something wrong. I'll just put it in this context. I step back. I re-look at what we've done. And I think it's been every time we've looked at it, we've found some thing that we could have we needed to do better that we've submitted in to give the the better notice and sometimes we see the capitulation like we did on the meter uh, the five the meter the five, not the 5g the um, the meters so power meters they capitulated they didn't go all the way where they needed to go but they capitulated on a position or we see them ignore it but but the notice on the in the record is to take away their reliance on the ignorance okay so that if you saw their reliance they take a reliance on this that's why they come up and they do this plausible even though it's a lie it sounds like it's a plausible reason for why they do what they do 
because then that's the statement. Like I told you in Virginia, the attorney general had to come out because of his position relative to that tact. They have to come out and support that position in an attorney general's position, which now is like rolling downhill to the jurisdictions. They had to do that. That sort of, that fortifies their position in the future. It, it, okay, so now you should see chess moves going on here. If they, I hope you, you see how this thing starts. There's a reason why they do things. They're making a move for anticipating something in the future. This is just not what you think it is. This is a whole setup of moves that have been already set up before you. And your job is to eliminate their ability to make those moves. I hope that's something here. I don't know. Uh, yeah, folks, I'm just, my mind's going through. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm telling you what you need to do. Not what I think you need to do, what the Constitution says, what the way the dynamic that we are in, the res, the foreign influence that's going on within these people. They also tell you that they're not, they admit in this, that they're not going to adhere to the oath. They just think you're kids, little goats. You're the human. And they think that they have the ability, because it sounds to me when I hear this, nobody, with all the passion I've, I've ever seen go out, nobody has actually held their feet to the fire by the black and white. With the, and given the impression that there's going to be able to execute on it. Now, that's the other element that I was thinking about. That's why the, the majority is all important here. This is like what I tell you. The occupier... The international rule, whether it's unwritten, written, whether it's just knowledge, or it's there, and it says, the, it's, I think it's the first rule they understand. You, as an occupier, you don't piss off the natives. The majority is the evidence that that happened. All right? And the majority happens to be the black and white objective basis on when the community in Virginia no, and I'm not talking just Virginia. You have to go find this very same stuff in your constitutions in all states. It'll be there, even if it's, as I said, if it's not there, you've got this equal footing condition that you can rely on. Anyway, going over down to Virginia, you then bring the fact of that into the, to bear upon the condition. You just state it. You focus your power in where it's supposed to be, and you bring in the fact that they have stated they do not treat you as the posterity. That's a that's a fatal error. They don't intend to treat you as uh, the posterity. They want to treat you as animals, and they will hope that you go away. Is not it, 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 that's an admission. They don't want to hear you. That on itself is not actionable, but it can be made as a record statement and showing that they. We're re that's the duty they do have to consider what you say when it's proper and lawful. The omission to consider is the problem. They don't have to respond to you during the meeting. They do have to respond in their actions. You tell them that. Short sentence. And so I think I'm, I want to stop there. So much to talk about. So many things to go on to. But that I just want to keep giving them some ideas here. I don't know who's working on this. I'm talking in the blind. Uh, I, but that's, I want to be on record, I guess, if it ever goes south, to maybe have people in the future consider different. The error that went on, the PSYOP that followed, brought everybody up into the into its, into its tailwind, and the cancer that blows across the country right now, imposing, uh, uh, really wastes, they're, they're, in, they're ineffable, they're, they're, there's no efficacy in what they do, they they have not, provide no protection. And they're not constitutional whatsoever. This is, I see the same deception in lots of things in a way. I told you about it like in the legalization of, of cannabis. I said, here, you go look inside this, you'll see there's a deception built in already. You're not getting what you all think you're getting. Well, people shrug, shrug their shoulder and said, well, the master won't beat us a little bit. They'll beat us only a little less. And, and we, we accept that. And so I won't belabor that problem in us. That's just our fallen nature, and I don't know what to do about it. Not that I'm, I don't have my own, you know, I get tired too, folks. I don't know what to tell you, except that. I do get tired. Oh, I can only do so much. We focus, I've had to reduce my amount of uh, focus in what we do quite greatly because there's just not a lot of people helping. And the mass of uh, angered, uh, riled, alarmed community in Virginia, at least in other counties, you'll see it in other constitutions, 
is that violation of international law where the occupier went too far. You can identify that. They were, I told you, they weren't supposed to alarm the public like this. And, the, and then you'd kind of the alarm the public by treason or felony or whatever the other thing is, and by this. And so you can have that statement as well. As I try to bring words to some of my thoughts uh, just off the top of my head that I would be putting together in a document myself. So I guess there it is. We'll move on about this uh, we respond, I put it in a childish nature. We do respond like kids. We respond like little goats. We don't respond to, to make the record of the importance of what we are saying, supported by the black and white, to assert the importance and put the burden on the other, on the one that's reticent to be faithful to their oath, even for as much as you may agree with it or not. That is a contractual agreement to something that you can attach as long as you can put yourself inside. You do that in a few words. I told you that last broadcast about this. And uh, we see the failure of the, the failure to do it that way allows them to say you're just a bunch of children. It's in the backside of this, I believe, in the backside, uh, in, in the background, I believe they know that going to sanctuary was a trap. And that's why the attorney general came out and said so. They know that. But you all, as the community, the majority of the people haven't figured that out. And when they continue to go, as I said, when they continue to go down this path and disregard you, even in an open mic, even though you weren't supposed to hear it, it's a truth. But it means you did, you're doing something wrong. And when you do it right, you have two options there. They can, a criminal will still disregard it. But you're in the position that you made it. It was in the black and white. It was in the law. And they have no defense against it. And they can't rely that they weren't told. This is no different than the point of first contact, I tell you, in the bag of law. You throw the law in their face. And it's not wrong. It's the correct stuff. But properly interpreted. And you throw it in their face, and now they're of notice they can't rely on their ignorance. They can't rely on anything the courts have ever given a cop. And it gets, it's getting worse, folks. But anyway, this can be over to the Iran thing. Uh, acting like children. Uh, I can't tell you how disappointed I, I am uh, relative to the response of Iran after the uh, su the killing of their uh, general. Not that I'm supporting any uh, 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 Iran in that context. I'm looking at, again, we're not going to meet peace if we don't take the responsibility to act grown up. And so <laughs> this is a kind of, it's starting to become a theme. The people that are occupiers just ignore the childish nature in us. And then the other side, they try to see if a childish nature will work. And then we start dealing as fighting amongst each other as children instead of stepping back and taking the more circumspect uh, response that we need to. Last week, I told you that as long as Iran doesn't attack the United States, this thing is underneath uh, Iranian control, if you will, in the perception side. Well, that didn't last long because uh, what comes out later, after they did the attack, uh, another airliner went down. And so what I had to say last week, and what I was hoping would be this story here that I found, Iranian revenge will be a dish best served cold. And there's a, this is a sentiment, I don't know, remember now, it's an old uh, adage, that you really, you hold back any revenge and you take your time with it. Uh, you you hit someone where, where they least expect it, when they least expect it. And that's what I was hoping the if I if you will my my belief that a, there was a Persian an ancient Persian intelligence working here uh, that was destroyed pretty quickly when Iran under its current government went and got ahead and sent missiles on over to attack government bases uh, United States government bases now interestingly up front there were no casualties that caused me to start thinking about a problem and uh, for us it's a a thought of who's really running things, and again, this is the reflection, the carnival mirror keeps coming back in my mind, but Iran did not uh, take revenge uh, while cold, uh, on a dish served cold. They came right back, they actually raised the revenge flag the first time they've ever done it, and then they wanted to, uh, what do you call, uh, revenge the killing of their general. And then I thought it was peculiar what they did. They caused, in a revenge of their, a hero, a martyr in their country, they took, no, they 
plotted and planned no damage to the United States servicemen. No damage to much more than buildings and things. Now, the scary part of that was that it did telegraph they can do something, and that was kind of neat. I thought that this was just like a two, two people telegraphing their capacity. That was kind of interesting. But to, to use that to revenge someone who is a very important authority in your country didn't rise to the level of the purpose. And so here's what I thought, here's what kind of occurred to me on a lot, on some of this. The, because the Iranians were rash in how they did it, and they said it, this attack was a slap in the face of the United States. Then they shot down the, it, it turns out they, they admit now they shot down a passenger liner because someone mistook the airliner as a threatening airplane which they then blamed on the United States for instigating, which I agree with a, a lot. I, I agree with the instigation. Again, it's an extension of the cause. It doesn't eliminate their own finger on the trigger or what, or automatically taking and killing 176 people in a passenger line. My thought turned to this uh, revenge that was not taken cold. It was taken not even as as a revenge. It ends up not slapping them in the face. Had they not been so eager to show off, we likely wouldn't have 176 people dead. That said, if the United States hadn't made up the attack on the embassy, we likely wouldn't see that either. And this starts to show you how things devolve. This may have been the worries of the Cold War. Someone sends off nukes just because of misinterpretation. And we've heard some of the stories, at least on the Soviet side, how they did come very, very close to just protecting themselves, but it was false signals. But this story comes out to explain to me how the psychopaths that we're dealing with, they're not that, that adult, if you will. They're not that grown up. They will do things to impress the other. And in the meantime, people die. Now, it doesn't exonerate what the United States did to the Iranian airliner back when, uh, what, 1986 or whatever. I don't know their years anymore. 290 people died at the hands of the United States doing the same thing. So this is the point. The people suffer. The people suffer under something that I don't care where you start looking at or drop in. Someone had the ability to make the proper decision to do better. But I keep asking you all to think about Step back and think, how do you do this better? How do we start going down the, a more peaceful path to address very serious violence if we don't? And so I don't know what more to say. Uh, disappointed in one regard that we're not seeing ancient wisdom stepping into this. And that kind of, if you will, terrifies me a bit that we then, we then see in response to the downing of a you know, Iran military admits they downed it. There's no question now. I was suspect because of all the stories that, and my really my focus isn't on who done it. It's the dynamic, and that this is telltale of people's officials making decision in your life and for your life, whether you want to understand that or not. Uh, that. Again, as we see hindsight's 2020, I've been talking about like Operation Hindsight. We've seen enough, folks. These people are showing, like you see, the words come out of their mouth in Virginia. They don't, they don't regard you. They regard you in a certain way. They hope you go away. You have to turn that around and explain to them that wasn't proper. How? Where they had the obligation to do different, and the failure to do that is going to bring them into liability. And this is where we start to see, because Iran did not, and this is, I wonder, how, how close are they working together? Because Iran did not kill any soldiers, the United States decided that, and said that they're standing down, the United States is not going to continue. That was great. But you see, this is a game. This didn't happen in all seriousness. This didn't happen with the revenge you would think was commensurate with what happened with their general. And today it comes out, and, and you can see where you act too soon imp imprudently. You actually now are underneath the gun yourself, but you 
also miss something else that may come up in the future that would aid your cause. And why I'm asking for us to be more acting more prudently on what we should be and need to be doing. It comes out now that, as I identified in the photograph of the invasion of the embassy there, that supposedly gets Trump to decide to kill the general, who appears to have been on a peace mission. Mission, and I, I want to, I'd like to know more about that. What was that discuss, that peace mission with the uh, Saudis going to do to interfere with the? tail wagging the dog, Israel and the United States, that what they're trying to do to destroy those people, all those people over there, that they had to take them out anyway. They fabricated this embassy attack. I saw that in the photographs. I've got a Twitter. I said, I do it in question, but isn't, this, isn't there evidence in this photograph that shows who's actually doing this? You don't have a photographer, an AP photographer, on the inside of an invasion break gate, breaking a gate, be in that position, Unless you're in on it, unless that was known to want to be have as a setup, folks. So I identified this as a problem right off the bat, but they use that as an excuse. Now it comes out they're admitting, yeah, that was a big excuse. They use that invasion, that 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 breach, supposed breach, but to kill this guy, and that then gets the the Iranians to imprudently act, which causes them to be subject to their own foible, human error and taking down a passenger plane. The ultimate victim now is the people. And so there's going to be a lot of fervor. Well, how much better position would they have been if three days later and they hadn't taken down the passenger plane that Iran was able to sit back and say, yeah, see, they're fa Trump fabricated that the embassy was invaded. And what, I look at that, at what, who are, are we going to continue to, uh, to allow and agree and not voice an opposition at least against these lies that cause action to kill people, that cause more people to be killed. While the same, the same mentality is turning around in domestically in the United States and making decisions for you. How, how, when is enough going to be enough? And so what turned up, too, was an interesting little dialogue that came on the Twitter, again, one of the places I get the news, it was a Senator Mike Lee talking about this power now that Trump has created uh, in this, what they call now a dictatorship, to, to do that at all. And now the, the Senate is now having second thoughts. Uh, they want to have a, a debate. And apparently the executive branch, remember now, go to branches. You've got to keep your mind in this uh, establishment thing. This is what this is all about, how this is all circumvented. Or now we're seeing that they got a little insulted that the executive branch would dare come into the Senate body to inform them that they don't have the right to debate whether or not the president can continue to do what they did. And so for five minutes, I'm watching this senator uh, moving his hands and pensively discussing it while uh, Rand Paul is standing next to him. And he's talking about they should, they're insulted and they should be able to have the debate. My response to all that, folks, and this is when you start getting back to the beginning steps. Again, United, Trump set up the excuse. This is I identified in the photograph that I saw. This is a setup. To be given an excuse that we didn't know later to go kill, a, kill someone who was actually on a peace mission to do something else between that could seriously affect their re rationale and reason and support for what the is Israelis and the United States government is doing in there, in those countries. Uh, that then the Iranians act childishly to do a non-destructive response that inadvertently kills, uh, like a bad billiard shot, kills a plane load of people, 176 people or so, crew and everything, Ukraine no less, is the same kind of un unintended consequence type stuff from imprudent action that I see going on in these statements where a senator, a Republican senator, is trying to rationalize to people why he's going to go and support a Democratic position to re-look at the powers of the president. Now, for those of you that just heard me and have looked at this at all and have been around since 2001 and everything that you can see there and anything I've ever said, that, that's at least a bit of hypocrisy. Why? And I answer this to that thing, and I sent this to Senator Mike Lee, and he doesn't respond, obviously. They don't really care. They think we're children, and we don't have a clue, I'm sure. 
Otherwise, I would have been responded to, I, I believe. They think they can just ignore you and, and keep going, and it will do that. In this case, federal, I don't know how much control we have at that level, but enough of the pilgrims and the, and the, and the oppressed get up to, and start shaking their terror torches and pitchforks might actually get their attention, like it can do in, in Virginia. I asked this, based on his presentation, that we have, a, as a Senate, we have the right to debate whether or not to allow Trump to be a dictator on his decision and constrain this. I said, debate, I asked the question, debate from a Senate body allowing executive dictatorship paid for by a complicit Congress, dollar sign, dollar sign on the S's, complicit Congress, and without justification, a global war of terror, which got us here? And stop attacking Americans too, I continue. Repeal P-A-T-I-R-O-T, the Patriot Act, and progeny pulling all funding or you all need to resign. Hashtag hindsight 2020. Hashtag enough is enough. Folks, this guy comes out and wants to agree with the Democratic side to have a debate on whether or not Trump can be a dictator when they handed that power to them since 2001. As long as we focus on what he said, we miss the whole point of why we got here. As long as we focus on the fact of 176 people died and read, rest in peace all you folks, you innocent people, because of a Horrible mistake, admitted readily once they got the actual intelligence back from the military side. Killing a bunch of people. Until we rectify this immature response by these so-called leaders, and we go back to the core, what starts it, and stop those in the, from the beginning, we're going to continue to watch atrocities as this. And this is where I ask you, when I bring an, a, a, um, something for you to consider to do, go to the foundations. Go to the black and white. Go to the real interpretation. Don't throw your opinion. Don't make an argument. Find all the places of foundation that have been built before we got here because that's really, as far as I, my study is, that's about all we have left to us at this point. And if we don't start at point one, no different, folks, that I have to approach every land question. The very first thing I want to know is what's your right to the property? Prove it. Let's lay the foundation of the right. Is it there or is it not? If we don't start from the beginning of every problem, we're going to continue the problem. History will repeat itself. What did I say last week? Break the revolution. Everyone wants to continue a revolution. No, you want to break the history that repeats itself. Stop the revol revolution of that wheel. That's going to take a responsible response, not one that they team you to be a kid, little goat, or how we imprudently act like children. When we already know the wisdom of taking revenge is served best on a cold plate, as I was anticipating last week, which I was completely blown out of the water in that anticipation. And here's the other thing that really struck has struck me. The people of Iran were Hat were joyous that uh, their government struck back at the monster called the United States. They were joyous at that attack, which was planned to do nothing more than destroy some buildings. And miraculously, somehow it didn't. They didn't uh, hurt anybody. They just did destroy, destroy buildings. But I also noticed the pictures looked like they were photoshopped, perfectly round circles of, <laughs> of explosive areas I thought were kind of interesting to notice, though I didn't do any analysis. I don't have the time. It's not my point anymore. I don't need to get into the minutia. I'm looking at how we get to places and how we're going to stop it if we choose to. The people rejoiced over an impotent response. And they rejoiced that the response met the value of the loss of the general who was apparently on a peace mission for their country. It is astonishing to me. And I realize that people are the same the world over. You will accept any kind of response. You're helpless and hopeless, and you don't have another power, and you'll allow it over to the whoever is on the top. Instead of standing up properly and taking responsibility, like we see, like I said, the first four sections in the article in the Bill of Rights of Virginia tell you all you really need to know how this place is wired in, in some regard. Yes, you have to go out and find some of the uh, uh, vulnerabilities to the officers that are in that establishment. That's a couple more sections. But that's it. You can find everything you need in the first four sections. 
of that Virginia Constitution, and it applies everywhere. And in fact, it's how we go about just about everything we do if I could reduce it down to those words. Your statement is nothing if you don't present your authority for why you have the right to make it, and then you don't impose a duty through their agreement in that in order to have a say, and then identify specifically the element of the, far, of the, of the harm. You don't start in the middle. You have to start in the beginning from the foundation. And so we're back to this. How is it that this guy can come out? He's just a politician. I have no respect for m any of these people. Uh, that we are, he thinks that we can be cajoled, and we will be, uh, until you make change my mind here, folks, by doing something better. But this guy is thinking he wants to make a discussion and debate over something that Senate body allowed back in 2001 and continued every year and through every NDAA and made you enemy combatants. And I said, stop on that. Stop attacking Americans. Because that's where all this stuff starts to come from. And, okay, the war on drugs is still sitting there, too. But it's still, well, this part of commerce, isn't it? So uh, that said, they're attacking Americans through focusing us on things that they want to do today that they have allowed decade ago, two decades ago. Now, we can buy into that nonsense, or we can hold their feet to the fire as best we can at this late date, and we can identify where the source of our bills are, and we can hope that imposes upon, we hope there's a shred of scruple left in those brains, a shred of morality that gives them a bit of shame that they've stopped doing what they do, while you at home do what you need to do. Uh, and I've been talking to you about this. I've told you what kind of a country you live in. They just made it obvious in 2001. And when he wants to go and talk about the debate of whether or not a dictator president should exist, when they already gave that to the dictator president, and this is going on, you realize he could care less about you or the condition of your country underneath the imposition they allowed, that Senate body allowed back in 2000, and, well, probably two, when the Patriot Act came in. Zipper killing Americans. Zipper killing Americans is a subject matter, folks. A police tactic of killing people in a hail of gunfire. They go through and explain to you now the euphemism the cops use, zipper killing. They tell you they do this. They shoot this way at people. They start at your crotch and shoot up, right, to take you down. But they also admit these people it will be anybody, but they mention specifically murder suspects. They also mention suspects. That's you, folks, Anytime you're under the gun. And this is particularly sensitive to me. This is how what gets this type, not the killing, being under the gun of cops for doing nothing but being in a fabricated state they created and then facing this. I missed this, folks, <laughs> just a few months where someone else in right nearby gets gunned down but shot in the back. He didn't do the zipper killing. They just fired in on a car, on a truck. The guy was having medical problems. So there is no, you have no excuse anymore. And the cops become a military force. This was done to me, which started me into all this way back in the 1990s. But now they're up to zipper killing. They actually invent this stuff. How to stop you. How to take you out. They now just shoot from bottom to top. Take you out. And you're only a suspect, folks. I hope, I don't even read the story here. They create these tactics to kill you. And you don't have the benefit of his presumption of innocence. It's only at the point of contact. And now they're going to be breaking down even the communication lines as a new story coming. But they have this thing they call zipper killing that you're now subject to. Notwithstanding that you're supposed to be presumed innocent. I asked a broadcast, in a broadcast as a title, Presumption of Innocence When? I don't think many people went and go listen to that stuff. But we're, this is the cutting edge of our failure. They are making plans and designs against you every day. And until you walk in and you take this import, make this important and stop this at the local level, you may be victim to this. It used to be the Israelis training the, mil, mil, training the cops to, to shoot you in the head. They do that too. Now they shoot you in the head last. Zipper killing, folks. It's a euphemism for shooting multiple times at you. Uh, in trying to arrest you. And then we get this 
this story today, just breaking today, trouble understanding police orders constitutes resistance, justifies use of excessive force, taser chokehold, rules Oklahoma federal court. This is now, this is a given to us by the Rutherford organization. That's the uh, gentleman I have a little bit of trouble with. Won't quite touch that we're in a military consequence, but this is where I want to go with this. You know that. What a government, what kind of a government, what kind of a state do you live in when zipper killing is a tactic to take out innocent people, the presu people that are presumed innocent, not you're not innocent necessarily, but you're at least supposed to be presumed innocent. And then the federal court overseeing this and your civil rights, remember that since they're always your exactions they can put on you at any time, because, because, if you won't believe it, if you've never heard it, if you're only the few people that listen and you always listen, you know what I'm saying. If those of you start, just starting to listen have never heard it, just go read Title 42 U.S.C. 1981 to go see that you are subject to extortions of every kind and no other. That's your civil rights. That's your equal rights. Now, we come here today, and uh, I think John Whitehead here telling us, a court case he filed was dismissed because the judge ruled that notwithstanding the victims, the presumed innocent guy's inability to understand what he was being told, and he wasn't being forceful, any resistance, even though he couldn't understand what was going on, any resistance was deemed sufficient to allow an immunity to the cops for the harm they put on him. What kind of a state do you live in, folks? I've been telling you this. Where the federal court would come out and say that the cops, the military, can treat you any way it deems for its own security. Is nothing other than a definition underneath the Libra Code. Which, remember, the United States government kicked to the curb in 2010 murder memo. Which also has been coming up here in the Twitter as well. No one responds to me all these brainiacs that seem to know how to do do this stuff, they don't want to respond to the most basic truths. They want to talk to you, talk about all the minutia they know, and we don't want to cover the most important problems. No, at any rate, that's my frustration. Federal court says that you cannot understand something. There's no communication defect that you can use in an excuse to, to justify any remedy against the, the military that harms you when they try to apprehend you. If not responding is resistance, then when they knock you out, as they did in this case, isn't that resistance too? And then can't, aren't they justified to zipper kill you? I can't believe anybody would say no. When you live in a state where you have no protection, and the protection is to the military, under the costume of police, I don't know of anybody that can, and with a rational mind that can come to the conclusion you live in anything but a military state, a military district. And you know them when you see them, folks. That's their Libra code. I go there because of that. And so, here's your notice, folks. You can't even not understand the cops. And they can do whatever they need to. And you don't have a remedy against whatever harms they put upon you. It's not much of a place I'd, I, I think I want to continue living. That I guess our silence agrees to that, doesn't it? And so, as I've been telling you before, everybody needs to listen to this stuff to the point that they say that's not going to happen in my neck of the woods. And I'm going to work to stop this nonsense. Just like I'm going to take and I'm going to assert the right of the Second Amendment in Virginia, section what, Article 13 or Section 13. I have the right of the presumption of innocence. And there's going to be put in law that I have a remedy. Now, I don't know what the text of that law would be. But if it's not put in now, they can do this to you. One of the thoughts been running through my mind, unless you even after the fact, if you're found to have no weapon and you suffer harm, you get a remedy. Period. To put no constraint, and you have to make them privately liable. Don't put it through the government. 
because that's they go after the taxpayer. See, this is another policy consideration you kind of you may have all missed. These are the technocrats making what they do immune from you as well. No law here actually allows what you're hearing. Tells you you don't live in the place that you thought you did if there, you thought a constitution was working at this layer that you have to defeat. And until you step up properly, you're just animals to be dealt with by a military who protects itself, even if you're not a threat. I almost can't understand it. I, mean, I, can't, I can't believe I read this stuff. But it's here. I've told you it was coming. Now they've cut the line of communication. You don't even have to understand to be beaten to death. And now zipper killed, essentially. Because if non-action non is resistance, then you being unconscious is just as resistant. I guess they can still do what they want with you, can't they? And you've been watching this happen. You everyone look at the, you see this this train wreck people getting beat down after they're subdued, and you wonder, well, but he's beat down. He's already, 15 guys are kicking him in the head. This is why. This has already been in the work. This has already been a rule. Somehow the cops have already gotten the note. You didn't. Now that you are, what are you going to do about it? And I suspect this is going to explode. I, I, I'm just, I don't even know what to think here. I don't see what stops any cop from doing anything when you when you when you finally realize what the supreme court has agreed to in these people too to be a military officer in the color of a costume of a police the peace officer you can be too intelligent and you can be too psychologically stable it was likely not the license you wanted to hear the federal courts give to these guys but you just heard it you do not have a remedy against cops who claim that your non-resistance was resistance. I suppose if they walked up to you as drunk and you didn't respond to their commands, they could probably shoot you for being a threat, right? Because you were being resistant. They can beat you up and choke you if they don't kill you. And they can get away with it. How much more license of abusers do you hand to somebody here? When you see your government doing this, uh, what else is, is, is beyond the idea when you look at everything else, at least you've heard me talk about, when you took up the Epstein problem and how much help he had and all the stuff that goes on and all the stuff that gets lost in the system, and you keep believing in that system without taking it by the horns, showing the very thing that they stand behind as being something that means justice is injustice on its face. It's the color of justice that's providing... Uh, presenting injustice is that felony, multiple felonies again. As long as we stay silent in all these subject matter areas, this continues. And so I'm back to stating the, this religion that people believe in called government. When is that going to be enough that you start stepping up? You are going to be the government if when you finally step up. Until then, the occupier is. And you will suffer this. You, any one of you may not. But most everybody, well, anybody who's engaging in it most likely will know. This pretty much rips that whole, if this stands up, this pretty much rips off any limitation. What I've been telling you is you have to put the limitations inside on the local level. And how you do that is kind of giving exemplified in Virginia of how they're doing it wrong going to sanctuary, but how you can see in the Constitution how to do it right and do it that way. And replicate, if you need a model, replicate that in every subject matter area. In some regard, like I said, my mind says that's it. I mean, I don't know what the problem, what the question is anymore. Why aren't we, why are we dragging our feet? Why do we let these psychopathic children and the seats of decision make up stories and pass it off as reality and cause people harm? Again, the microcosm of, or the, the, the mirror, the karma mirror of the Middle East reflects on us, folks. That whole dynamic, that childish, impotent dynamic, that atrocious dynamic that went on when you see from the at least the Iranian side that wasn't necessary not that I say they didn't have a cause I'm saying it wasn't necessary that the unintended consequence of that caused the death when they didn't have to respond that way 
is us responding as sanctuary cities instead of going after what I believe to be objectively the more proper way. And I point that out only because that's what you've heard in the last few weeks if you've been listening. Otherwise, it's any subject matter that I will look at or, or address myself. So we're asked to, uh, we're, we're continually asked to not um, lose the faith because the official does wrong. <laughs> it's, a, it's a global message right now. And we heard this here weeks ago. Again, my tabs <laughs> took me a while to get to this stuff. But it's all the same. The, the, and this is at Christmas Eve. The Pope on Christmas Eve. Don't let church failings drive you away from God. Folks, don't let our military, it's killing you, drive you away from needing our service. Don't let that drive away from your faith in what we represent. Is was given to you in Christmas. The same attitude that allows cops to beat you down for not resisting is say, well, you still should have faith in all this. Which this, if you get into the other side of the Pope on the religious side, that was quite the statement. Quite the statement. I'm not infallible like I told you, but don't let that uh, drive you away from God. They won't define what their God is in that regard. In a way, that's a truth. But that means that you have to then separate your belief in a creator versus the imposter who subjects you to the cover, the color of the being that same thing. And this is where we get the governments. The, the, the religion in my church is just government. It's no different in, in secular government. They're doing the same thing every day to you. And because we don't denounce it, denounce that part because we let the semantics rule our lives we get into it uh, seems like almost every problem we is perpetrated upon us by this dichotomy that we do not cleave from us and we keep attached to us when the state is failing the first thing they do is well keep your faith and no one says, upon what, then? What did I say earlier, the Federal Reserve? Full faith and credit is what drives this thing. It's undefined, apparently. It's endless as well. No one questions that. Keep your faith, folks, while we do wrong. There's no different this statement here, as the Pope admits. He's not infallible. Notwithstanding all my failures, keep your faith. Keep your God. But I'm still the representative. I'm the vicar. I'm the authority. This is no different in one governmental sense as it is in your secular government that we just heard, despite all my failings, despite I'm a psychopath, despite this is a caucusocracy, have your faith that this government serves you. It's a two-step disassociation. And we continue to keep it together. Remember, the whole, this whole awareness, I don't care where I look, is based on what, folks? It's based on your confidence in it. This thing ends when that stops. Whether or not the momentum that that system created can be stopped immediately is a different question. But when your consent ends, it stops, at least for you, and likely for the other, once you can bring your thoughts and your, and your intention to bear to eliminate it. Yes, keep your creator, but exorcise these that come under color to defraud you out of your rightful existence in life. Those that would send missiles against each other just to show each other you can. In the meantime, a bunch of innocents die, is killed, is harmed, and killed. Stunning, uh, stunning statement. Don't let church failings drive you away from God. Amazing. And we continue to li to agree with that. That's the same Pope that agrees with uh, all this policy stuff, climate change and all that. Remember in 2015 I did all that. Exposed that whole thing for you, if you hadn't seen it before. 
that this is an occupation on your life and it's necessary that you throw it off. I don't know how each one of you will decide to do that. I won't even know how each one of you will decide to do that. That's been my frustration. But you're looking at being told the proof of the failures and that they want you to continue your confidence in it. And they will continue as long as you keep giving the occupier the things that occupy your life the air to breathe, the, the energy to continue. That's, it's, again, Virginia is really interesting to me. If a majority of people are, are there, the mass of the population is there, we're told that's one of the conditions that causes the rectification, the alter or abolishment of the system there it is, uh, that is there, that has become, that has occupied us. Hindsight 2020, the operation Hindsight 2020 should be us saying, ah, got it, now we'll go to the proper thing to do. We'll finally take action and eliminate this nonsense. I don't know why we have any other uh, any other definition or reason why to make that decision. To me, it's been a long time coming, and I just, in some regards, so disappointed in in people over all their complaints of their inaction. And then, like I said, I, I see it over and over. We respond mostly wrongly and or short. We fall short when we do try to do something. And that's just on my experience probably over the last maybe 10 years as we've been doing things on art, you know, like I do during the week. And we find out, I say, this, you need to do this, this, and this. And whether they're a colleague or not, someone who's been someone I'm helping on a property issue, and they fall uh, two steps short, and they don't rash realize what they have before them that they could take those other two steps that we're missing, a, we're having a disconnect. And the only way I know to solve that is you need to jump in because then you start seeing that once you start what, what, flexing that muscle, if, if I can say it that. But that degradation, that diminishment is going on over a long time and we're starting to see it pop out. We're starting to see our inability to cope and the other, the technocrats and those, anyway, the occupier has been taking advantage the whole time it's been by a plan. We continue to allow history to repeat itself instead of seeing immediately that there's a, enough should have been enough and stopping it. Having been principled enough and stopping the insult to ourselves to stop things that we see and be the agent of that uh, alteration. Uh, here, it's pretty much straight up. If you think cops going to college or anybody, uh, you think they're more than what I've been saying. Here, this is another evidence that likely uh, they're not, not going to be. They haven't been. Uh, and we see this story come up about the diminishment of our society and the allowance of the surveillance, the allowance of this military cockistocracy running the show. We don't stop it. We're incapacitated. And by incapacitated, we're then manifoldly pressured and exploited. And these next two stories start to show you that the college students are the, we're seeing evidence of the problems that there, we become a society willing to allow or no, in, not able to reject the, con, the control, the constraint, uh, the dictation, the dictatorship to our lives. It's not just some guy in a off presidential office. It's all these people, these minorities that make decisions that seem to claim to represent you under color and getting your consent to continue. Is again themed here. Colleges are turning students' phones into surveillance machines, tracking the locations of hundreds of, of thousands. Colleges are tracking students. Remember, these are all confined jurisdictions now. Test beds. I've been we've been talking about this. Is not even new news. It's just this happening, folks. It's not just a story of how uh, the intelligence is being gained on all this, but the college students of which are in unable to. Uh, cope essentially and they only do what they kind of get along with uh, you know, we do that in, in our immaturity we'll send spit wads across the room remember just to see if the spit wads come back just like we just saw what happened in Iran in Iraq right that's, what, that's what's going on but we don't lift ourselves beyond that mentality or that capacity you know, colleges are tracking students locations to enforce attendance and analyze their behavior and assess their mental health Everything I've told you for years was coming down the road. And any of those things we saw coming as noticed to us through all the capacities of the di of the of the uh, of the devices and hardware, the technocrats putting that stuff together for us, and we accept. One company calculates a student's risk 
score based on factors such as whether she is going to the library enough. This is the system that college students are under when they accept or are forced to attend to do so. And you see part of this, the second one is uh, analyze their behavior because policy uh, criminals need to control your behavior. That's one of the things they check. That's one of the first things they keep track of, behavior control. And so this is what your students are coming through college to do. That is now noticed to you if you had a question. And then we see this. Colleges are dropping testing and standards in order to create more diversity. Same policy criminals imposing these ideas into the university system are now telling you that they're dropping all levels of access which you would say is great, more people can get in. You've got to understand that these are the people that graduate. Remember they had bonehead classes in college? If you didn't quite get out of high school quite with enough uh, ability to continue and the, and the strategies of uh, the communication that they, we thought was education, which was in my time starting, I could see starting to turn into indoctrination, obviously. I'm, I'm like a, right in the cusp. Part of me is wonders and real science and really awe in the world and wanting to go study all that and how to think, you know, not how to think, but that you think about this stuff and inquire inquisitively into the world to understand it better versus how you, you know, that you're going to think these certain things and only think about certain things and only do certain things. I saw the change in that. In fact, I was able to identify in books, uh, the, the school books, even from his junior high school to high school, they started to change. You could just see what they were pulling out and what they were injecting. Now we hear it. Now you have, like, I think, think come, something came through. You have uh, little little boys and girls being taught sexual behaviors and all kinds of odd, I would say, deviant things for their age, for sure. It, it just, I mean, it just doesn't it just doesn't make sense to me. But that's what they're being told now. This is how they adjust that. They become little creatures of response. They don't become creatures that. Well, they become creatures. They don't become men and women that that are responsible. They stay child. The They're dropping the testings like they removing bonehead. You don't even have to have a standard. Well, this is what I've been telling you about cops. You can have a, a, a you can go through four years of college, but what do you actually know? It, it doesn't, it's not really that you're capable. It's just that you went to the tests and that's the requirement to try and put you, put that class of people distinct from everybody else who didn't. That used to actually me mean something mentally, but it doesn't anymore. In other words, like the degrade mentality where a lot of the people that were the bullies that ended up becoming the cops that would actually respect people that were wealthy and rich and well-to-do because they admired that, but everyone else they'd beat up on. Now that, that distinction's even going down, okay? So there's not, they've broken that down. But it's, you're seeing in the colleges a dropping of testing and standards. I don't know of anybody that can look at that title and understand that the future is not looking so good and it portends a condition where we have these enforcers out there which are the ones in control because you go through the education process and that process certifies you're not capable anymore. And you're not. And so your li your lives are tied again to these phones. They're tied to the, the you, will, you have to go through these tracking systems. And then I noticed this thing came up, which is kind of interesting. I hope it, it's, again, a lesson. We have to step in back into the alternative than where they want this thing to go. And so this is a lesson for us. Those of us living on and, and addressed, uh, being addressed this way, trackable, traceable, controllable, behaviorally, limited, diminished, subject to a military rule, not a just, rule of justice, uh, I saw this story, it's a little bit off the base, but it's exactly the problem relative to a new digital world and this tracking and tracing of behavioral control. The pro parking meters across New York not accepting credit cards were never programmed to work in 2020. My mind compute, immediately thought about that's what your life will be. At some point, your phone, uh, your digital world, your digital life won't be programmed past a certain freshness date. And your life will essentially cease until you're, uh, you've been diminished and your life, act, your actual life do, is, is taken. Here is an evidence that parking, they can't even keep parking meters running because some, some bureaucrat didn't upgrade a private 
software update. Talk about updates. This is going to be attached to the same system that the college students are being adapted to. A problem, a software problem caused credit cards and prepaid parking cards to be rejected by parking meters around New York City. When your life is this social credit and anything else tied into this system, and someone decides not to update your file, uh, that will be your freshness date coming, your expiration date coming to term. Whether by accident, or whether by some bureau rat policymaker bean counter's decision that you, there's nothing more they can extract from you, or you're just too much trouble. I found this story pretty indicative of that condition. I don't know what you would have thought. Yeah, it's just about parking meters. But it's about public-private partnerships, the disconnect, and that nobody in the government decided that it was important enough. But that's a plan. That's going to be the private nature of that will be handed to somebody as you see your health care, so-called. And I was going to do a story, but it just doesn't seem to be wrapped up that Obamacare again has a problem legally determined. The core of it was not law constitutional. Now they're still trying to salvage the severable parts of it. Uh, but this, remember, that was your death care. That was how they were going to carry it cradle to grave. Uh, that, uh, that you're seeing the story here that when they decide to not update your software, they have an expiration date. It's over, folks. And so you can be quiet now and keep accepting or be reticent to do anything and think you're going to get out of it and let the future take it, whether that's your progeny, your posterity or not. But here's the notice to us that that's what's going to happen. There's going to be those disconnects. And the other thing I was telling you about, like the criminals that the government becomes and uh, private-public partnershiping gets together and you don't know what they want, uh, they make it up and that's okay. And if you resist, they can harm you. And the fabrication and someone who has control on the backside of all this, or the backside again, the backside of all this, they have control of all this. We see the proof of the performance that's coming on this uh, virtual, uh, I hate the virtual reality term, but this virtual existence, this digital existence, we see what the capacity is, and I don't know if you appreciate the incapacity of a phone. The capacity of a phone, on one hand, is marvelous. The incapacity relative to certain type of programs as well, because of, they're only so powerful, that it comes out, uh, again, your phone, your connection to the digital world, your social credit eventually, all this stuff tying in, the ability to or not update things, the ability to get stuff or not get stuff, the accessibility of people of information that you don't have or programs that you don't have that can be used against you. Uh, again, uh, continuing, uh, updating the awareness. They can put you anywhere that they want. And like we've heard over, I've, I've reported on all these reports and stories year after year, a Chinese deep fake AI app uh, allows you, and this is, um, I think some people may have seen this, allows you to put your face at this point on the app you get Put your face into film clips of, in this case, Chinese video of Chinese movies. They replace your face with the character in the movie. Now, that was a very popular app, but they've pulled it. There's some serious problems with it and its abuse, which people immediately got into doing. Nonetheless, it's an exposure that there's technology here that can literally make it look like you're someplace, creating a probable cause, if you will, that no one no one checks. It's just what the government runs on. You see that in the illicit FISA court condition. Again, through the Patriot Act, they have to get rid of that, folks, and we have to be working to move, remove all of that in the progeny, as I said before. It's helping to bring this surveillance condition on. It's helping to bring on technology that puts you in places that you may not have been. Interestingly, in this link, and this is going from Cryptagon, he has this uh, new a a listing of a new AMD processor, a 64-core Ryzen Threadripper, 3,900 bucks, which for a government, for me, it's impossible. For a government, it's nothing. It's, it absolutely processes this stuff at blazing speed, where I can see in the little app they give you for your phone, 
the anomalies, and eventually, for sure, the anomalies that you see will be worked out. That it will become very difficult to say whether or not you really were someone. As we move our lives into this world, when this digitization becomes our life, it becomes reflective of our life. You want to talk about a straw man, folks? All you, all you people that get triggered on this, to be your digital man, your digital woman. It'll work the same way. And this is the capacity they're building into this. They're telling us that's available. They can replace you in a scene. And these are again just these are manipulated stuff as well. But they could, I mean, as far as the, not manipulated more than they're handed to you. What you can do, it's limited what you can do. But that's not on a, a government actor that essentially decides that you're too much trouble. And anybody that listens to me would be someone who would, well, if you st- if you if you actually spoke out, would be certainly on that target. And like I said, I was apprehensive talking on the radio uh, to, to, because they just get sound bites and put your put your voice together. I, I've kind of gone beyond that because now they just take the phenome in five seconds. It's I don't even have to worry about it. I just know at some point I could be placed anywhere saying anything. And they'll have the proof, right? And so this is what's coming down. We can accept it. We can continue to consent to it. I think the technology is fantastic, but it's it's not that you and I think it's great and that we might have our fun with it. It's that I see these as the uh, writing on the wall, the ability to gather intelligence, manipulate it, and turn up outcomes. If if the president of the United States can fabricate to everyone's agree, agreeance that the uh, Iraqis invaded the invaded a, a embassy that never happened, just wait till they can be able to put the C- beyond CGI technology into play. But it's on your life. Now, where do they start getting all this information? As we see, it can be through your phones, through the Internet of Things, all these the smart, not so smart, not so intelligent folks if they're smart. Uh, we wonder what's going on. We see the United States government making some decisions. We know that they have a situational dominance they described years and years ago. Uh, they have been working to do that. In some regard, I guess, as a nation, you want to protect yourself as it advances. But you start seeing what they're doing is dominance even of you. And now, all of a sudden, it's not such a pretty picture. Uh, but what? who's involved? How does it go? Where do they get this information? And I don't know if I reported it or not, if it got away from us. But there was a complaint that these things, uh, these satellites called Starlink that SpaceX was putting up, was actually starting to interfere with astronomy. Because there's so many of these things. And they only have a small percentage up there. Well, now we understand that Elon Musk is not just this inert uh, entrepreneur that can do this on his own, and he's such a brilliant guy, as we've identified and as, he, as, as I've identified and as has been told, like any of these other big companies, they're all connected with the government. We just heard about U.S. Space Force. We want to know how they're going to get all this information. We just heard that the U.S. Space Force was funded. U.S. Space Force first launch goes for Monday night. It's already happened. The first official launch of U.S. Space Force is a go for Monday evening at Cape Canaveral. SpaceX Starlink launch is set to blast off at 9.19 ET. It went off, folks. The launch is sponsored on the new U.S. Space Force, which is signed into existence on December 20th by President Donald Trump and a sixth branch of armed forces. How was it? It's something that was never in existence and just started to get funding. It's already in place, running like the wind to put these satellites that Star SpaceX already has to throw up there underneath your new Space Force. The establishment of literal space cadets. Creating that Internet of Things up in space now as satellite links. Not as some little innocuous Internet feed. But as a military force now admitted in the blink of an eye relative to its funding. No different than I told you here what last week. We're looking at the reinsertion of the trauma-based fear we saw of de Blasio in New York was how fast the, the Patriot Act came up to answer to an attack on 9-11. The, the event I told you I looked at the first images, and my comment was they went and done it. 
again, it was been in the it's been in the, it's been in the notice if you knew how to look at the news. It's been in the documentation if you knew how to look for decades before. Here it is. Space Force Gus got paid for. Now, now Elon Musk and his SpaceX is already launching satellites underneath a military use. How much more evidence do you need to know, to, to see, to know you're under military control and dominance? And there's no limit. And the Patriot Act said so. And I told you that it did. I don't know how many people really appreciate that. Not that I said it, that it's, it said it, that you were enemy combatants, you are now presumed guilty, and now you see they can zipper kill you because you have no actual presumption of innocence. That required you to step up and start making local demands that you do have it. And I don't know how to actually get to that more than to say you put a liability on those and private liability and you start making that notice to people. The brand new Space Force just had SpaceX launch a bunch of satellites. Now, those are probably going to be the space cadets. At the same time, you're told NSA allowed to unmask U.S. citizens without surveillance warrants. That's coming out of the courts as well. U.S. courts have appealed ruled Wednesday, and this is weeks and weeks ago, if not a month, that U.S. government can collect information about U.S. citizens without first obtaining a surveillance warrant. As long as it was done so inadvertently, while legally monitoring the non-national uh, abroad, according to Reuters. Now, what's non-national on the Internet? I don't know, given all the servers everywhere. The point is that they can un so-called unmask you without a warrant. All these surveillance links do that. This is all under military things. I guess this is my main theme. We, we can dis continue to try and disregard it, but that's the subject matter that we're under attack on. And to me, that relates directly to the Second Amendment. But... I don't think we can solve it that way. I think we have to go this other path to show that we could solve it that way, but that we pr pr produce so uh, our action would be more peaceful. And as we also read satellites, up, Apple has a secret team working on satellites to beam data to devices. This is a serious connection. I told you this was going to happen actually from some patents. This is years ago, but they have been working on it. Now connect up to your devices. This is a situational awareness condition. All these startling things start to work. I don't really know how they do the power for this, but that doesn't matter to me. I mean, there's some phenomenal things going on anymore. Apple, your phones, who they now agree they get all your pictures and look at them. Uh, they also are working on satellites up to the uh, up into to connect up, maybe with the Starlink. This is a military operation. If you had any doubts, folks, this is all a military operation. Uh, I wish I would could say it different, but I found that if we approach it, if I approach it more that way, without actually naming it that, but approach it, as I tell you, through the international provisions and principles, notwithstanding they've been kicked to the curb. Inside our work, we have a better result than to put our head in the behind a woodshed acme bucket of sand and do la-las until we get sand plumbing out of our nose. I don't know. We have a better outcome. I think we'll have a better outcome relative to Virginia or any other state that the sanctuary city's cancer is going to do the better thing and to assert the constitutional power of the people for the maladministration and the attack of these policy criminals who do not regard your law. That's the treason up front. It's not that hard to get to. So I hope something I said kind of inspires you to think a little deeper and then get active in some place and resolve, help resolve some of this. Uh, we probably will have to come together at some point to, to help each other. I don't know. We'll see when that starts to happen. But, uh, Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And all that stuff you do in the backside that I just see, oh, but the backside that today, not a dial that word came out, I don't know why, uh, that you do that uh, helps to give people more information on where they can find us. And all y'all that are simulcasting, thank you very much. And all the good responses and the thumbs up and, again, thumbs down with a comment would help me more than just a uh, impotent thumb down. It doesn't make no sense to me. And uh, everybody who can spread the word, I do appreciate that wherever you do, whether or not I ever get to see it. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be with you next week. Tech Diffs where nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 